What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is May 10th of 2023. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, we've got to talk not only about the massive correction that's coming here to Bitcoin over the next coming days and weeks, but on top of that as well, we've got to talk about the major altcoin cleansing that is going to happen here over the next coming weeks as well. It is not going to just be Bitcoin blending up, but the risk on speculative altcoins that are going to get a big reality check and we're going to find out just how much of that valuation we think is still out there in the market is really nothing but noise. We've got a lot of things to talk about in today's video. If you guys happen to enjoy the rambling, consider dropping a like. It's one of the best ways you can support the channel. And let's go ahead and kick off the rambling. All right. I want to go ahead and start here by talking a little bit about Bitcoin's price action. Again, running through the basics here, we've had continued choppiness since back in mid-April inconsistency in the trend after a really nice follow through throughout the entirety of the middle part of March to the mid part of April. And if we take it here to the weekly trend, while the bulls are still in charge here, they still have been able to hold that trend. We have not gotten a flip just yet. Price action is looking abysmal here. We have been practically flat since back here in mid-March, and we've continued to make lower levels since back here towards the closing of April. This is not a good look here for Bitcoin. More specifically, we need to start seeing whether or not it's going to actually be able to hold within this channel. This is a very important range of price for Bitcoin to be able to hold and clear through if we are supposedly in some new bull market. That's the thesis that a lot of investors have been chasing. A lot of those who are going heavy and all in on the market, chasing the same narratives of some big bank run. I don't want to spend too much time on that, though, because you guys know we've already kind of dismantled that argument. The price action alone, market order flow just the reality of things stable coin liquidity all these metrics are telling us that the narrative the gig essentially is up it's not real so we need to start getting prepared about asking whether or not hey you know just with the available liquidity that's out there and the speculators are people going to keep buying at these prices well we think it's going to be the latter situation that it's not going to be the case. We think that Bitcoin is going to be continuing down here. And we can see this not only in the lackluster performance of Bitcoin here for the past couple of days, but we need to take a look now more specifically at what's going on in the altcoin market, because this is a great gauge to let you know whether or not we've really reached the end of the bear market. Let me explain. Taking a look here at some of our different metrics we have for altcoins, one of the big ones being ETH to BTC, the ETH BTC ratio, which is showing the performance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. We can see that as we've been echoing for the past couple months during this rally, Ethereum has not been outpacing Bitcoin. This has been solely Bitcoin move really over the past couple of months. Now, there are some outliers. We'll talk about those as we go throughout the video, even the meme coin craze that a lot of people have been asking me about recently. But I want to go ahead and again, just emphasize that we've been setting in lower highs, lower lows, and we've continued to trend lower here since our trend indicator flipped red since back in January, and it's been holding ever since. We've been talking about how we do believe that the ETH to BTC ratio is going to continue correcting. We have a target here of about 25% decline to the downside, roughly around 0.05 on the ratio. That would be a range where I'd start to look at potentially getting long on Ethereum or at least getting more optimistic to start dollar cost averaging and building those long term positions. But that all being realized, I'm not really eager to do this, guys. We are in a long-term contractionary environment for the next couple of months, probably into the next year, depending on how long the Fed has to keep interest rates suspended. And if they are going to pivot for whatever reason, it is going to mean something has broken in the economy and people are not going to be rushing in to investing into digital assets like crypto. Okay, and we've got to really be serious about this, guys. The trend is showing clear weakness here. This has been on a near two year, it's coming up here exactly on two year distribution phase for Ethereum against Bitcoin. Essentially meaning that I think a lot of stakeholders who made a lot of great returns during the DeFi summer, we were some of those traders who got in when Ethereum was around 80 to 100 bucks, they're distributing. They're slowly but steadily selling off here at this range and continuously throwing narratives at people like Ethereum, uh, ETH 2.0, right? All the scaling solutions, EIP 1559, all of the sub layer two networks like Polygon and Arbitrum and Optimism, which we're gonna take a look at in a moment, that are just gonna help Ethereum scale and it's gonna be this dominant platform and there's tons of narratives and reasons why Ethereum should go up, but it just seems that none of it is enough for Ethereum to go up. Why is that, 
right? There's deflationary pressures from EIP 1559. There's staking that's coming up here. Well, it's already actually in effect, but essentially there's gonna be sharding, all these things. Isn't it just gonna be great? Well, the problem is there's no use cases for Ethereum right now. DeFi is dead right now. NFTs, practically non-existent. The vast majority of that market activity has been long gone since the COVID stimulus has worn out. And now Ethereum needs to have a serious sit down conversation and ask itself, what is its use case? What are people gonna be using Ethereum for? Have we been able to fix a lot of the technical issues that have continued to stall development and innovation in the Ethereum ecosystem? We can't just sit here and say, oh, there's gonna be a burn, therefore number go up, right? But that's like, this is really like, I think really, to be honest, because it's an immature approach to it. I got to be real with you guys. It's fine if you believe Ethereum's going up, but you got to have a real backbone thesis as to why that's going to happen. Are you going to have a reason why more buyers are going to outweigh the wave of sellers that are going to come from those unstaking, from those losing faith, from those who are fearful of a contractionary environment? What are the things that are going to keep ETH higher? I got to tell you guys, the trend looks incredibly weak here. Whether you're looking at it on the Ethereum to BTC pair, or if you're taking a look at the dollar pair here, right? Again, the other day we talked about this clear deviation that we got. This was the time when you start to get prepared to go short because right when it breaks up to new highs, once all of the potential shorts here have been essentially, a good chunk of the shorts have been forced out or their stops got hit, that's the moment where institutions can start to offload positions. And look at what happened on price since then. From 2100, we've come down to around 1800. And now, a lot of those lower levels we talked about, revisiting back towards the lows of June or going even lower, doesn't sound too crazy to a lot of people. We got to be prepared, guys. It's not just Bitcoin, it's not just Ethereum. Take a look here at our metric for Bitcoin, ETH, and stablecoin liquidity dominance. Every two weeks here, I'm looking at the bi weekly chart here. Each of these candles, week by week slowly bleeding out valuation it's not something that really is too apparent until it eventually is essentially when you're at the final capitulation stages where a lot of those losses come in but we've already been warning about this we took our positions off the table back here in august when percentages were around 72 percent of market share and since then we've continuously seen an increase and the market dominance of bitcoin ethereum and stablecoin liquidity that is good news for us who have been in cash not so good of news for those who have been buying the relief rally since back during the summer or really at the beginning of the year all right so let's go ahead here and take a look at some of these plays that people have been buying the dip on one of them that a lot of people came crazy in on back in january was solana or at least it appeared that way from around eight dollars uh, around eight dollars per coin exactly on the lows all the way up towards 27 dollars. not bad if you can catch that rally now, what has it done really since, since it made that move? Obviously, with Bitcoin continuing to rally, you know, generally month by month here during the first quarter, we should expect some kind of follow through in February, March. We saw nothing of the sort. Since then, Solana has been slowly bleeding to the side. Now, what's really going on here, right? Is this price action? I want to ask you guys a really important question here because I know a lot of content creators will tell you, go out there all in on one altcoin. It's going to give you 10x, 100x. Here's an altcoin gem go leverage trade, use my referral links, right? all that kind of stuff. I wanna ask you guys something genuine here. And it's the same thing I'd point out here during this period of time in June to October. Does anything about this price action look organic to you? Does anything about this price action look real? Does it really look as if, you know, people are really sitting there thinking, hmm, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, you know, we have some people bidding in at Solana at around $20, some really starting to distribute or sell positions at around 25. Uh, it's really at a contesting point, you know. Solana's really got a lot going for it. Could this be the beginning of a new bull market, right? The kind of serious conversation you would expect, you know, to have if we're really talking about a new bull market. I gotta tell you guys, this price action looks like market makers who propped up prices on very thin liquidity, and are doing all they can to slowly but steadily distribute an optimism at a much higher price. They have every incentive to do this because it doesn't take too much to get us up here towards a higher price range when the order books are thin and slowly sell off those positions at a much higher price. You know, roughly where they were gonna sell it back here sometime in 2021. Not a bad deal if you can get it, especially considering a lot of the people who have those positions into a lot of those large bags are VCs who are way 
way overexposed into these plays and stuff because they got in at a fraction of what the current market price is and they can just slowly sell off time after time and make free cash every single day. It's the name of the game, guys. A lot of the plays that went big in 2020 and 2021, massively VC owned, little fundamentals, artificial TVL and volume. A lot of the activity you see on these new layer ones is not real. And knowing that FTX was a huge stakeholder in the Solana ecosystem, Sam Bankman Freed as well, the branch doesn't fall far from the tree, so to speak. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, guys, it's, uh, it, you know, the network constantly shut down, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just not a safe network in general, but this is not the kind of network I'm looking to pour money into. How about Matic, right? Matic is a little bit better. You know, I think Matic is at least as a community more serious and has actually had real traction, real adoption. Uh, but at the same time, Matic is not without its flaws. And the big thing here is that even if you love Matic as a network, right? I'm not here to, to rail on the network itself. I think Sandeep and a lot of other people in the community are really good, genuine people who wanna just build, right? Um, you know, the big thing here you gotta ask yourself is from a trader's perspective, cutting out the emotion, any potential ties to the projects and stuff, right, that you may have, you need to ask yourself, does the chart look good here? Our weekly indicator has been signaling since back here in early April that it's time to be short here. And the question you gotta ask yourselves is, if we can't hold roughly around, say, 75 cents here over the next coming days, what's to keep us from coming back down here towards around 35 cents? to around 25 cents, the previous accumulation range. What's to stop us from doing that? What's the narrative that's that's getting people excited to go long on Matic as a token, as a pure investment, right? And that's the question I keep coming back here to, guys. It's the same thing here with other scaling solutions on Ethereum. Optimism, got the red flip back here in late April, has been bleeding from $3.26 down here towards $1.69 here, just in the past month and a half. Not looking good. Not looking good at all, to be honest with you guys. Arbitrum as well. Chopped sideways for a bit. Market makers built up a typical IPO or ICO reversal pattern. We break up towards the previous highs. Sits up here, they distribute, and slowly but steadily, they're selling off as that buy side momentum fades, taking us all the way from $1.75 down towards $1.12. This is in a matter of just a few weeks. We have not even completed a full month. And Arbitrum has almost come down towards correcting about 40% off of its highs. All coin market looks nasty, guys. It does not look optimistic. I'm just trying to be realistic here because there's plenty of people out there who will tell you guys to go speculate, tell you this is the next bull market with full confidence. But they don't follow what the Fed is doing. They don't follow the fact that monetary policy is contracting, that we are in an entirely different environment. What propped up these valuations over the past two years is going away, guys. It's not coming back. And one of the greatest examples you can see of this is Jane Street and Jump, two of the largest market makers in the United States and in the broader crypto space here, right, as a whole, pulling out of the crypto market. This is really bad news. It's not just bad news for Bitcoin. Uh, there's some really great charts people have been demonstrating showing the liquidity difference uh, you know, on the order book for, say, exchanges like Binance for major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. That's already damning enough as is for the space. What's going to make this even worse is what it's going to mean for altcoins. Without a lot of the market making and liquidity provision that was there in the altcoin space, you're basically taking away the opportunity for a lot of participants to start engaging in this ecosystem, the kind of liquidity that can lead towards the major run-ups in altcoins. And it's just generally going to bring away trading activity, right? When you don't have liquidity, people don't want to trade it. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is huge, guys. I mean, this is on par with like Genesis and some of the issues that Genesis has had as a big facilitator in the background for crypto lending platforms and liquidity to exchanges seeing these two names step out of the crypto space and they say it's for regulatory purposes i think they realize that the music has stopped as well that the opportunity is really drying up in crypto and that it's going to be a really cold winter no matter what the reason is this is a clear sign that we are entering into a contractionary period in crypto markets it's sad guys i i, I um 
I, I hate to say it, uh, I love crypto as, a, as an industry. I think that there is potential here, but we've got to be realistic when none of the narratives are holding up. I got to think as an investor first. I got to think as a trader first. I got to be a bit cynical here. Now, I understand a lot of you guys have been asking me, and rightfully so. There have been quite a bit of craze around the meme coins out there in the crypto space. And some people see this as a return to the bull market. Oh, it's looking looking like another bull market because we've got Pepe and <laughs> all these meme coins just popping off like a rocket. I'll tell you guys this, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's no way you can really do technical analysis on these things. Some people will tell you you can't, you can't. It's like Doge. If you want to put a little bit of money into these things, treat it like a lottery ticket. Don't put your entire life savings into these things. Don't trade with substantial amounts of capital. You can, the best thing you could do if you really wanted to speculate on meme coins and potentially make those crazy returns is not by chasing names like Pepe that have already made a 40, 50 X here over the past few weeks, but more importantly to put small amounts in a variety of different altcoins that are early on that aren't trading too much. Who knows, one or two of them pop off they massively multiply your money, it outpaces any losses you might have made on the other ones, and hey, presto, you've made some really cool returns, and you didn't risk your entire life savings and lose sleep over it overnight, knowing that your entire net worth is in Pepe token. That's the way to play it, guys. Um, and accept that any money you put into these things, you, you've lost, right? Like, just accept that, because if it happens, then you won't lose sleep over it. And if you are losing sleep over any position you have in these plays, um, you know that, that means you're probably overexposed to something that you really don't believe in, and it's just trend hype, right? And this is, again, this, this builds back into our point, guys. Pepe token, really? This is what the crypto space is trading now. <laughs> what happened to DeFi? What happened to NFTs? What happened to governance and all these narratives that we've been supposedly sold on over the past few years? Well, those teams have gone silent. They sold their tokens. The VCs are out. They made their money. Game over. I, I really, I, I get a little bit frustrated about it, guys. There's a lot of bad actors in this crypto space who still need to be washed out. I've been around since 2017. I've seen it. And, uh, I mean, yeah, if we're here just to kind of speculate and, and, you know, basically try to cut corners against one another, then, then crypto is really not going to be going anywhere. We haven't learned our lesson yet. And a lot of the valuations that have rallied up over the past couple of months are going to come crashing right back down faster than you can imagine. It's very, very sad, guys. But at the end of the day, I know some of you guys still want to go trade and speculate. There's nothing wrong with that. You have every right to do that with your capital. And the big thing I want you guys to know about here is that if you are going to be trading these different meme coins on Uniswap uh, or PancakeSwap or all these different tools, the big thing I want you guys to know about is that it's not so much a matter of getting the right meme coin. It's about making sure that when you're swapping through AMMs or you're buying particular tokens, that you're not interacting with a malicious contract or token contract that are going to leave you losing all of your funds, getting access to your wallet and allowing malicious actors to gain access towards your tokens. This is the biggest thing you got to be wary of, guys, especially if you're trading on AMMs and decentralized exchanges. That's why I highly recommend if you guys haven't already to download the free browser extension, our long term sponsor here on the channel, Wallet Guard, which is a free browser extension you can utilize on top of MetaMask or other crypto browser extension wallets. Now, the really great thing here about WalletGuard, I mean, really couldn't come at a better time here because of all the increase in decentralized exchange activity over the past couple of weeks. It's a great browser extension that can serve as a extra layer of security when you're acting, interacting with the DeFi ecosystem. Now, there are a couple big things to know about here, a couple main features such as proactive URL scanning to make sure you're not on a false Uniswap website or PancakeSwap website, maybe even SushiSwap as well. Right, to make sure that you're not interacting with malicious links that might have malicious contracts that might steal your funds. But on top of that as well, transaction simulation. So you're able to actually see your transactions real time before you actually sign it. So instead of seeing some random hexadecimal code, you can actually see what's gonna happen when you engage in signing a transaction on the network. Is it gonna mean that you're trading a, one asset for another and getting one asset in return? Or is it that you're gonna be sending all your funds to one particular address? 
You want to make sure that you're not going to be engaging in those types of malicious transactions. And WalletGuard has a major announcement, a third major feature here that has come out, which is known as StormWatcher. StormWatcher is a really neat tool using machine learning. This technology is going to allow you before you even connect your wallet to the website for security purposes, StormWatcher is going to actually check to see whether or not through its machine learning techniques, whether or not the website itself actually already has drainer contracts that are aiming towards stealing all of your funds. So this is going to help warn you when you go towards a potential malicious website that you should not connect your wallet and that you should be basically protecting your funds. And this is a really great tool. I'm really excited to see Ohm and the team continuing to deliver here. This stuff, again, is imperative now considering the market conditions that we've got. So if you guys are gonna go out there, speculate on meme coins, you know, trade in the market, I'm not here to be negative towards you guys, to each their own. Everyone has a right to do that. If you guys are gonna do it though, just do it safely. And check out the link down below in the description for WalletGuard. You guys can get a link down below in the description to access it for free. And you can add it to any browser extension wallet that you utilize. So let's go ahead here and talk a little bit about the macro setting, guys. I wanna go ahead and talk about the April 2023 CPI numbers that are gonna be coming out here in just a couple of hours. We're just a couple hours away from getting those April figures from the CPR Consumer Price Index. And this is gonna be very important because this is one of those few big macro events that could really tell us about whether or not the Fed has done its job. Is inflation coming down? And we can already see here that the VIX over the past few days has been ticking up a little bit, nothing too substantial. We've had some pretty volatile chop here as we've gotten towards the range we were at when it comes to volatility back in December of 2021, right before really the sell-off started in February of 2022 in equities. Let's just go ahead, take a look at the charts here. We can see, just like Bitcoin, the daily trend on the S&P 500 looking choppy. It has not made any new progress since back here at the beginning of April. We've been chopping around this range for a long period of time. We take it to the monthly. I think it becomes very clear here that we've been pretty much weighed down at this price level since back in May of 2022, over a year of sideways price action. Take a look at that momentum indicator. Have we gotten a flip on the monthly? No, we have been red since as far back as March of 2022. I can't tell you guys of anywhere in the last decade in the secular bull run where we had the red flip this bad for so long. Which makes us think, leaves us to be inclined to think that this is a relief rally that is going to be met with further downside and correction in the near term. Take a look at the Nasdaq here, right? Same exact situation. Since throughout April and May, nothing but chop around this resistance range. Inconsistency on the daily time frame. Let's go ahead and take a look at the monthly here. Still no blue flip. We're still stuck in the traditional accumulation range here. Question is, can we break to the upside of this channel or are we gonna break to the downside of it? So far, we've cons consecutively faced resistance at this range and have not been able to clear through. If we couldn't do it here in March and we couldn't do it here in April or May, perhaps it's time to stay away, be in cash, be patient. If you're going to dollar cost average, if you're going to build positions, do it slowly and realize that we are going to be in a contractionary environment for some time. Considering the ramifications of inflation, the Fed is in the driver's seat and it needs to contract the demand of the economy to get it back in equilibrium with supply. And it's going to do everything it can to get that number down to 2%. I promise you guys of this. If the Federal Reserve, for some odd reason, doesn't do that and they kick the can down the road, we got a lot more pain coming. There's no easy way out of it. It's just the reality. And if you can be in cash, take advantage of four or five percent yields, you know, right? I don't, at the end of the day, guys, I, I, as a YouTuber in the crypto space, I don't benefit from being negative here. I'm not here to be all doom and gloom. Uh, it definitely would be better for business if I, I promoted going all in, using my exchange referral links, doing X, Y, and Z. Instead, we're here promoting tools like WalletGuard that, that help you to be more safe in the environment of crypto. I'm really big about doing things in as moral of a way, uh, as a moral, as morally as possible. I'm getting to the point where I'm like stumbling on my words here. Probably rambled too much today, but I try to do things as best as I possibly can, guys. And for those of you who have made it this far, um, you know, I, I hope you guys can see that. You know, For those of you who really stay around towards the end of the videos, you guys are the core audience that I really care about. I wanna be able to content for, I wanna do my best to serve. 
And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed that content, consider dropping a like. It's one of the best ways you can support the channel. And if you haven't already, and you're definitely considering getting some more information around the kind of content we create here on the channel, I definitely recommend checking out the Dash Report. You guys will get access to that momentum indicator that we demonstrate here on so many of our videos that we utilize in our trading strategies. You can use it across the board on TradingView on practically any asset. And on top of that, you get the newsletter, you get the Dash Report discussion group, you get our trade alerts, you guys get access towards our cryptocurrency allocation portfolio, all kinds of good stuff like that. So that's it for today's video. If you guys are interested to check out the dashboard though, you can get 20% off at the link down below in the description if you sign up for an annualized subscription. It's a great way to support the channel. But until the next video, guys, I've cut off my rambling here today. I hope you are having a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.